And we're recording. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Here we go again. One day, one kingdom. <laughs> this is Westeros Whenverly. <laughs> this episode is all about dragons. All about those pesky little damn yeah. big giant fire breathing monsters that we all love. Overgrown mosquitoes. Over well, <laughs> yeah, I guess they do kind of eat, More chomp like, on blood. They're so. like flying worms. Yeah, that breathe fire. Yeah, I love it. Anyway, yeah. this is dragons. The dragons episode. episode. I'm Tana, and I am Dave, and we are drinking right now. We are yes. drinking. Yes, all men because all men must drink, Dave. All, all men, men must, must drink. drink. Today we're having the black dragon. Which is made so that you can play along with at home with a dash of blue curacao. Mm. Uh, a dash, ice, folks. Yep. Don't go out and buy Don't a giant it. handle of blue curacao <laughs> thinking that you're going to need it now, for a lot of drinks. Every week I think, what can we make with blue what curacao? We, <laughs> because it was cheaper, apparently, to get a handle of blue curacao That's than right. to buy a teeny tiny bottle of the stuff. That's so right. Dave bought a gallon. Being a good Jew. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a drop of blue curacao. Uh, we're using cranberry pomegranate juice yep. for like a juice mixer over ice cold vodka with a splash of lime. And the color is almost black. It's a dark purple, almost black. And so we're calling it the Black Dragon. The Black Dragon. All men must drink. All men must drink. Yeah. And today we're going to be talking about Balerion the Black Dread and Drogon. Bring it Both on. Both black dragons. Both very powerful black dragons. Yeah. And so did you guess that Daenerys was going to have, was going to be riding the black dragon? Like when you were first reading the series, did you well, think, oh, she's definitely going to get the black dragon? I always kind of knew that the black dragon was the most powerful because he kind of hints yeah. at it throughout yeah. the whole time. It's always bigger, yeah. he eats more, he's and the first to like... I think as soon as, as soon as he mentioned that, yeah, it's bigger, it's doing stuff, it's kind of in charge, I was like, that's her dragon. Yeah. In fact, you see that very well in the scene where... Yeah. Uh, she goes and puts, you know, yeah. uh, Balerion on the yeah on not Drogon, sorry, Drogon on the on Balerion the chain. reborn. Uh, yeah, Balerion reborn, yeah. right? Drogon on the chain and gives yeah. it to the ma masters or yeah. masters of the the great the, masters, the great at masters, the, right? At the when and she then gets she her just eunuchs. Dracones, yeah. <sighs> fire everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Earlier yeah. tonight, in case you actually want to play along at home the way that we normally do, is you have to take a shot for luck. Before you start your podcast. That's and right. So That's right. Because we're doing a dragon theme and they're all dragons of every color, we decided to do a white dragon shot to start us off, which was a terrible idea. Basically a vodka gimlet. <laughs> yeah, it was just lime juice and ice cold vodka and that's it. Do a little shot of that. Yeah. <laughs> we called it a at, white dragon. At your own peril. Do yeah. a little shot of that. Yes. <laughs> yep. So that was the white dragon. I thought she was going to get the white dragon. For some really? reason, I thought it was going to be... Yeah, I don't know if it's because it was named after her brother and they were like a team. They and weren't I'm, really a team. I mean, he, he, sold, terrible, I know. he sold her into <laughs> slavery, <laughs> basically, know. for a golden crown, yeah. which he did get. And he was a terrible person and a terrible, person. a terrible brother, but she was the only. he was the only family that she had. And I don't know, I just thought white dragon... She has that white gold hair, the white and gold dragon. It just seemed to make sense for me. All right. What do you think about Rhaegal, though? Who's going to get the green dragon? Ooh. I know you have some theories about this. I don't know. I don't know. Because he's being played up as the most vicious, right? Because he eats Quentin Martell. He's, so, you know. So, so I but mean. But that could be a self-defense dragon thing. Like, he was helping out his brother, the white dragon. Right, right. But I don't know. I just, I don't know. So the dragon has three heads. Who rides the dragons? Well, we know Daenerys is going to ride yeah. one of them. Yeah, so she's got the black dragon. Who's she's got Balerion reborn. Maybe Jon Snow is going to ride one. Maybe yeah. a um, so Aegon. We, but we got it. It's got to be Aegon, right? So if we go back to Karth, when Daenerys is in the House of the Undead, she has all those visions, and in one of the doors, in one of the rooms, she sees her brother 
Rhaegar, 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 Rhaegar. Rhaegal is the dragon, yes. Rhaegar is her brother. Correct. And Rhaegar and Princess Elia, uh, right after Elia's given birth to Aegon, and he's holding Aegon and looking at Daenerys and says, but there's got to be one more. The dragon has three heads. Well, what about Viserys? But it's got to be, so it's not Viserys because, was he dead at that time at Karth? He wasn't, was he? Yeah, yeah because he they was just dead got when back. she was at Karth, but yeah. but when he was already dead, yeah. Yeah, but when Rhaegar said that to Daenerys, he wasn't dead. So why he was would... because in Karth they had to cross the Red Waste, and before that was Valar when they were at the Mother of the Mountains there. No, but was that a That's memory? Was that a true memory that no? She so saw? she was seeing all these visions, and oh, so she wasn't that's there. Right. You know, she wasn't there in the birthing room. So she's just looking at a vision of her brother that seems to see her. And he says to Daenerys, looking at her, that there's got to be one more. The dragon has three heads. Naturally, that's going to be Jon Snow because that's the only other true-born son of Rhaegar that exists. If Lyanna and Rhaegar actually made a baby. I think that's a true statement. So we have the three dragons are going to Jon Snow, Aegon... And Daenerys. You would think maybe Jon Snow gets the white dragon because he's got the white wolf. Okay, okay. That makes a lot little, of sense. Seems the question a little greedy. Is, I'm not sure he's going to get a dragon. Is he going to warg into a dragon? I know. Can he warg I mean, these dragon? are the big questions, right? That's yeah. what keeps us coming back for more. That's, well, yeah, obviously. I want to see we how don't know. unfolds. We don't... Uh, George has given us no hints in the world book, as far as I know, or in any of his other backstories about whether or not warging in dragons is a thing that wargs can do. We know that they can it can be with bears and saber tooths and yeah. eagles and wolves, but we've never heard of anyone warging a dragon. Yeah, a dragon or any s- mythical beast like that, a kraken. That doesn't say it's impossible. Right. Right. There's just no way to know based on the facts that we have. Gotcha. In okay. The world. So so there's that. So we've got those three. So yes. I think that there's a strong case for it being the three headed dragon being Aegon. Some people think that Aegon is is a son of the Blackfire line, that he's not actually Aegon the baby, that the baby died, and that this was just a Someone hidden away Blackfire branch. But and I'm like, that's they're trying silly. to bring him back. What's the evidence to support that, though? There is Why? no evidence. Yeah, okay. Just that the Golden Company it's was following. founded yeah. by Blackfire and the Blackfire descendants, and there was four Blackfire pretenders, and, you know, but... It makes more sense thematically and, you know, in a plot-driven narrative for it to actually be Rhaegar's kid. You know, that and Varys was there to save him. Elio Mopatis was there to take yeah, why, the kid in. Like, why would, it, the whole why, network why would, exists. Va, why would Varys be there for a Blackfire, yeah. a random Blackfire? So. What is what is Varys' deal, anyway? What's he up to? What's his endgame? Well, you know, he keeps saying this to everyone. He's in it for the realm, so... But why? He wasn't even born in Westeros, was he? Like, he's well, from... He, he was a Bravo over in Pentos. Yeah, and but but clearly he loves the, the Westeros in life. why? Well, right? like you he know, was taken the people as a kid the people and he was in the, cut. The, the people in the free... Well, he wasn't cut by Westerosi people. I know. So why does he give a shit? Because he hates the free city folk for Maybe. cutting off his penis. Anybody would hate that. I mean, Or testicles. Maybe he still no, has penis. No, it's all stem. gone. That's they, right. They took it all. He, right. When he's talking to Tyrion about it over dinner. That's the only time you hear him yep, talk about it. That's the only time. And it's because Tyrion asked in a very exacting way. Uh, and so... Yeah, but... I don't know what I I Varys, I don't know what his game is. The spider's weaving some webs and I don't know what he why he cares about Westeros. I think Or the I, Targaryen line. He seems to take care of the Targaryens. Well, he seems to take care of everyone. Yeah. Kind yeah. of because yeah. he does he does help Tyrion. Yep. Yeah. Though Yep, yeah, you have to think he'd be living fat and happy. With Elio Mopatis in Pentos. Like, the dude never had to work a day in his life. Yeah. He's put himself in harm's way, but he seems to enjoy it. So I just wonder. He's a big question mark for me. I'll be interested to see where his storyline goes. What about Peter Baelish, speaking oh, of God. sneaky people? How? Speaking of sneaky people. <laughs> speaking of sneaky characters that I love. Yeah. Like, I think he's so baller for, for where, a dude. What's his end game? You what think he is? wants to sit the Iron Throne? I think he knows he's never sitting atop right. that Iron Throne. No, I don't think so. I don't think that he wants to be in the Iron Throne. I think he really enjoys power, 
and I think he enjoys the game. Um, but he's, I don't know, he's a clever and cunning dude. It seems like the big, the great motivator of his life was his lust for Catelyn Stark or Catelyn Tully, uh, which now maybe is becoming Lady Stoneheart. No, not Lady Stoneheart. Oh, I mean, into Sansa. Into Sansa. I think that maybe he's replaying some stuff with Sansa. And so we've got that murky, weird, uh, you know, father, lover, teacher thing going on. Captor. Yeah, but like freedom, like he was her freer. He uh, used... He, so the, there's this whole connection between Pattire and Highgarden, specifically Olena. Um because Olena, the old lady, yeah. is the one that knew the poison jewel was going to be in Sansa's little hairnet and, like, fusses and then kills Joffrey. They're in cahoots. Like, those two well, are conspirators together. They're in it. Well, so the question is they're in it, but they're, I think, in it for two different reasons. Yeah, you know, I mean... Olena, I mean, Olena is like, this fucking sicko is not marrying yep, my fucking daughter. That's right. And, uh... Yep. And... And Peter Baelish was like, we gotta get Sansa the fuck yep. out of here. Yep. What's a perfect distraction slash way? Yep, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. Yeah. So I think that he's fascinating. He's doing really interesting things. The tapestry move. So Pitire, uh phones home, like he sends a raven to King's Landing mm. and asks for a couple of Robert King Robert's old tapestries. That are just in storage. When Joffrey took over as king, he had all these old dusty tapestries like put into storage. The old Baratheon yep. ones, and he's really replacing yeah. them with and Lannister ones, yeah. which is interesting because yep. technically everyone's supposed to believe that Joffrey <laughs> is a Baratheon, right? And so, um, and so, Pattire writes to the Iron Throne and requests these things, and then gives them to Nestor Royce. One of the men that he's trying to curry into his favor, like to court by saying, oh, these belong to the king. These were in the king's great hall. And so there's this really great scene in the new Sansa chapter that's out where he's showing off these tapestries that used to hang in Robert's Hall. It's Nestor Royce is like puffing out his chest and being super proud. Of course. Pattire is like, he plays the long game. And so... He's just accumulating wealth and power, but he doesn't have an army, so he doesn't read as a real threat to the other guys. He's a fascinating and awesome character, but he's definitely not going to ride a dragon. No. Yeah. So, back so. to dragons. Yeah. So, you get... I don't know. I don't. Who gets the green dragon? What, t tell me what you think about the you green dragon. What? I have nothing but question marks about the I, green dragon. I, I, I like where we started... I'm sticking with it. I think Jon Snow is getting the white one. Yeah. Because that's, that's just right. too fitting. White and white and white. white See, I think Aegon's going to get the white one. I Why, don't know. though? I guess maybe, did he have a green beard, like his fake uh, Tairashi beard? I think it was blue. Green. Was it blue? I don't remember. But, like, I can't, now I'm grasping at straws. Like, he's not going to get a green dragon because he dyed his beard green before anybody well, knew it was Aegon. There are some subtle hints that, that George likes to throw like that. He really but, does. And yeah. with color. And like, with, with color. Tyrion's eyes being green, one green and one black. And then we have the dance with dragons, not this last story, but the short story about those two queens, uh, the greens and the blacks, because at a big tourney, one queen wore black and one queen wore green. And so the loyalties were divided between the greens and the blacks. It became another way of talking about the Targaryens. And if we're going to talk about the Targaryens and the greens and blacks, we have to bring Tyrion into it. So because he has one black eye and one green eye, which I think goes to as a subtle proof that he might not be Tywin Lannister's biological child. Oh yeah? Yeah. Bring bring that to light. Let me let me hear what you have to say about this. Because okay. you, you did briefly touch on this before we started. Yeah. And it, it really intrigues me. So, so lay it on me, Tana. The world book put, came out. Put me in set. The world book came out. The world book came out. And it's got all this great history of Westeros. And if you pick up your world book, which is actually called The World of Ice and Fire, The Untold History of Westeros and Game of Thrones, and you turn to page 115, you can read about the friendship between the Mad King Ares, when he was a young man, and a young Tywin Lannister. 
and how they were besties. And they were two bros. Like, the Mad King, before he went mad, knighted Tywin himself. And, you know, made him his hand. And they were super bro -y. Well, Tywin marries his first cousin or somebody, Lady Joanna. And there's all this stuff about how Mad King Ares was lusting after Joanna. And they specifically put dates in in here that say, so I'll just go ahead and read it. And, read it for us. Yeah, we'll talk. <clears throat> so this is like, in, this is an aside, sort of a, the main story is happening and then there's a little notation on, in the middle of the page. And this is that notation. The scarless rumor that Joanna Lannister gave up her maidenhead to Prince Ares, the night of his father's coronation, and enjoyed a brief reign as his paramour after he ascended the Iron Throne, can safely be, be discounted. Hmm. As Pycelle insists in his letters, now Pycelle is like Tywin Lannister's gushing fanboy. This is Grand Maester Pycelle? Yep. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. and he's always like he loves Tywin. Yeah. And, you know, he tries to sell Tyrion out, which is why Tyrion cuts off his beard and puts him in the black cells. But anyway, so our information comes from Pycelle, so it might be a little suspect. Okay. Pycelle insists in his letters that Tywin Lannister would scarce have taken his cousin to wife if that had been true, for quote he was ever a proud man and not one accustomed to feasting upon another man's leavings. And so they're saying right away, it's just a rumor. Don't pay attention. They weren't lovers. No big deal. It has been reliably reported, however, that King Ares took unwanted liberties with Lady Joanna's person during her bedding ceremony, much to Tywin's displeasure. Not long thereafter, Queen Rhaella, who was married to King Ares, dismissed Joanna Lannister from her service. No reason was ever given, but Lady Joanna departed at once for Casterly Rock and seldom visited King's Landing thereafter. So this, like, puts a highlight. This is George's way of saying, pay attention to this. This is important. Yeah. And then, let me see here. The following year, so... Sounds uh, like some bitchy drama. It is. In 266 After Conquest... At Casterly Rock, Lady Joanna gave birth to a pair of twins, a girl and a boy. And then it describes the babies as being healthy and beautiful and spun gold and la la la. Uh, and then the King Ares came to like... Um, so Tywin... King Ares insists that Tywin bring the babies to court and also their mother so that he could gaze upon their... Uh, it has been too long since I gazed upon her fair face, he insisted. So the following year, when the kids are one years old, uh, they they take them to King's Landing. With Joanna. And, yep. And oh, this is it's so it's just chock full of stuff. So something untoward happens. The queen dismisses Joanna forever. Tywin the next morning. So the king gets drunk and does something. Joanna's mortified. Tywin tries to quit being the hand. He resigns his hand to leave for Casterly Rock the next day. After whatever happened, happened. And the, and the king refuses to let him do that. So Joanna goes back to Casterly Rock and finds out she's pregnant. And then Tywin stays here. And then we get the birth of Tyrion Lannister, a stunted dwarf born with a tail twisted and malformed with one black eye and one green eye nine months later. And like all the dates are laid out here. You guys can check this at home. You should. It's really fun. Like this, it's all laid out right here. And so it's just are like hint after hint after hint. that Tyrion is a dragon? Yes, I'm saying that Tyrion is the biological son of Mad King Aerys and Joanna Lannister. And I think That would make him... I think he's Tywin's Son, like I think Tywin raised him, so yeah. he has that same cunning, he has that same ruthlessness, like he was molded and shaped by, by Tywin, Tywin. Yeah. but I think his bio dad is Mad King Aerys, and I think that the things like him having one black eye and one green eye, which is a direct correlation to the War of the Blacks and Greens a hundred years earlier, which is a Targaryen thing, and the fact that he's stunted and twisted, so check this out, in another chapter... 
or uh, another paragraph. It says that, uh, let's see. So the queen says that she's, quote, sick of uh, the Mad King, quote, turning my ladies into his whores, end quote. Joanna Lannister was not the first lady to be dismissed abruptly from her grace's service, nor was she the last. Relations between the king and queen grew even more strained when Rayella proved unable to give Ares any further children. She had miscarriages in 263 and 264, a stillborn daughter in 267. Prince Darren, born in 269, survived for only half a year, then another stillbirth, then another miscarriage, two premature, one dead. And they described some of the babies in the same way that they described Tyrion. Bent, twisted, born with tails, deformed. And here we have a living dwarf who was born with a tail, like and Twisted, matches bented. yeah ma- and matches all of these descriptions that we get from King Aerys' seed. And maybe the fact that they were brother and sister and she couldn't bring any of those kids to term, but the fact that like Joanna was half, you know, a Lannister and so she was able to bring Tyrion into the world, I don't know. But like so I think that he's I think he's got some dragon's blood. I think that George so, is subtly putting that under our noses. So Let's talk, let's say Tyrion's a dragon. Mm-hmm. That means he is actually the true heir to yeah. the Iron Throne. Let's think about that. Because okay, Mad King and Joanna. Yeah. So the Mad King is Daenerys' dad, and Daenerys and Rhaegar's dad. Right. And so he's a half brother to Rhaegar. And a half brother to Daenerys, so yeah, he would, and he's older than Daenerys. And he's old, right? And he's older than Jon Snow. And he's older than Jon Snow, so he would succeed. So he would be the right. So t- t- Tyrion. Tyrion Lannister is the rightful king of the Seven Kingdoms. Oh my God! <laughs> but I don't. Think How he, great of a ruler would he make? Oh though? my God! I mean, I, he just. We've seen we've seen that uh, at the Battle of King's Landing, yeah. Bladder, Bla- Blackwater Bay. Tyrion like, is as close to having a hero in the series as we get. Like yeah. he is the closest thing we have in to the most unlikely the place yep. ever because yep. you know. Yep. He, he Where is, do wolves go? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, he's throughout the very beginning of the book. He's just a dwarf who fucks yep. and drinks. And, yep, yep. And Says clever witticisms. That's right, and, you know. But here we go, and so I think that the reason, if you guys are looking in your world book, it's page one fifteen, and it's highly a recommend you look at it. It's a it's a, it's a beautiful story, book, by the way. But they spend so much time on these dates. Here, you know, it's not just one stillbirth and deformity it's 10 of them in a row date after date after date after date and then it goes out of its way to show us that king Ares was in a position to take advantage or to behave in an untoward manner toward joanna lannister and he already yep. he, he's already had a thing for her yep yep you know, he's lusting after her he says you know it's yep. been a while since i've seen her fair face you know kind of saying you yep. know where that, where that hoe be at, you know? <laughs> and uh, that's, you know, that's enlightening stuff. Yeah. And I think having the world book supplemental is great. And I think that he, you know, he went through, he went through all of this as a way of, like, really putting a fine point on, because George likes to hide things in open sight. Yeah. And so if it turns out that, Ty, that Tyrion is the biological son of the Targaryen king... And is half a Targaryen, then you're, we're going to be able to go back through the books and be like, oh, it was right in front of us the whole time. One green eye, one black eye. You know, look at this. Uh, all the dates line up. It's it's it was right there the whole time. So. Oh, and he had a dragon dream. Tyrion had a dragon dream, and it's not specified. He says, like in Game of Thrones, the first book, or maybe Storm, something early on. He says that he used to dream of dragons, and it's not it's not spoken whether he had dreams like Daenerys would dream of dragons, where the dragon talks to her, right? Or if he was just like having a fantastical dream about a dragon and like flying on a dragon. But he used to dream about flying on dragons. Well, they and used they so that kinda, could be a thing. Like Targaryens yeah, have dragons, and George kind of hides that because they're talking about how he loves books and yep. he's read all these books and all this mm-hmm. history of the world and travels of the famous travelers and stuff like that yep. so 
That's very, very nicely hidden yeah. by Mr. George R. R. So maybe Martin. the Green Dragon goes to T- uh, Tyrion. Maybe you know. Oh, and and remember that saddle that he made for Bran? Oh yeah. Right, like I, I keep thinking that they're gonna need saddles to ride these dragons. Like yeah. there were these intricate contraptions with like rings and hooks and like little laddery dudes and whatever, and and Tyrion has already made special saddles for himself that he designed so that he could ride a horse and also for Bran who rode Dancer I think was it called Dancer yep yep that sounds Um, great and so he's got this like there's a lot about dragons and Tywin Kitty, you cannot drink you can't have the any black, of this drag. black dragon. You can't have it. Susie always has to make an appearance, yep. and uh, she was reaching for the black dragon while yep. laying down. Uh, in the, I think her look was, I'm gonna push that drink on the floor. I'm gonna push that drink off the mm-hmm. table because this table is mine. Yep. Luckily, she will not, because that would stain the carpet. But anyway. <laughs> You know, after all this talk, yep. I'm really starting to think that the white dragon is going to go to Tyrion. You think? And the reason I think well, the white dragon goes to Aegon. I don't know. Here's here's my so you're saying Jon Snow is not getting a dragon. I don't think Jon Snow gets a dragon. I think Jon Snow no, has wolf, John has a has, ghost. Has ghost. And anyway, he's dead and gone anyway. He's never yeah, coming back. Yeah, he's totally right. died. Come on, come on. We already know that Kit Harrington <laughs> ruined that for us anyway, if you've been watching Facebook or whatever. But so hear me out. Here's my theory I'm, on I'm why listening. I think Yeah. I think Tyrion is gonna get the white dragon. He's got a green eye and a black eye. Yep. I think he needs the white dragon to round him out. No, the oh uh, well yeah. Because he's not getting the black dragon. He's not getting the black dragon. That's yep. going to Danny. Yeah. All right. Going, so, going, gone. So he he's got the black eye covered, black yeah. side. He's got the green side covered. But he could have Rhaegal because he's wild. Rhaegal's wild. It, Tyrion's not really that wild. Tyrion is a calculating, yeah. very precise man. When he he's protective. Maybe Rhaegal was only protecting his brother against the whip that Quentin was using on it. Maybe. So maybe. I don't know. But Let's I think. I think Tyrion is more clever. He's not very strong. He doesn't make aggressive moves. He yeah. makes clever, cunning moves yeah. to get what he but wants. But he's brave. He does bold strokes. He does. It wasn't clever or cunning for him to climb up and put an arrow in his dad's belly. But he still yeah. did it. Like That's He true. behaves passionately. He's not a coward. He rode out during the Battle of the Blackwater. That's right. He you rallied know? the troops. I and mean, without he, him, he, he was, wouldn't be yeah. anywhere. They and he was anywhere, the mastermind. So. He was the mastermind behind, you know, why they won with the big metal boom and everything. So yeah. no one. So I don't know. I want to see Tyrion on a dragon, and I think that Jordan, George is priming us to see him on one. I but think you're right. I'm gonna say Aegon. If he doesn't get his ass killed right away, which would be such a waste, because why go through a big surprise at and the end kill of, the kid? Yeah, why at the very end of that season say, "Oh, look, yep. there's this chance that there's another Targaryen." Blah blah blah. Who's and already then, landed in Westeros and has already taken s- over Storm's End, Storm's and, End, and yeah. Griffin's Roost, and a dozen castles, and is like reinvading Aegon. Come again. So. Yeah. But this is the thing. So. The dragons are going to need people to fly them over to Westeros, maybe. So we know Tyrion's over there. Yeah. Tyrion is with the second sons yep, he's right with now. The second sons. The We've... battle of the battle so, of Marine is so, happening. So how would Aegon, or even how would Jon Snow, get a dragon? I mean, the dragon could fly on its own and like follow along. Yeah. It might go where its family is going. Well, the only one who probably wouldn't would be Drogon, and we know Danny's yep. going to ride Drogon. Yep. He's going to she's going to lead. I hope so. that I mean, provided that she doesn't get taken to Vase Dothrak or killed by this Kalasar or whatever. So I guess it wouldn't be unlike George to have her die in the very beginning God. of this That would new be a blow book. and a half. I mean, it would be a blow, but it would also set us up for the for, black dragon, for the to, become black dragon to become someone else's. Or but it's Danny. We've been with her from the beginning. <laughs> Oh, when I started reading big, Game of Thrones, but I big, thought Ned Stark was the main damn character. But he at the end, the his main head gets chopped is his off. Kids, it's the same as like Ned is just Obi Wan Kenobi. Ned <laughs> he has is, to die so that yeah, we can have the Force. Ned is Spider Man's Big Ben or Batman's ben, parents. Uncle, Uncle Ben. ben. 
uh, or Batman's parents. Like, there's there, that trope, that thing exists. So maybe that's just, we just got closer to Uncle Ben than you normally do during comic books. I don't know, but like, there's that character exists in the narrative, in the wide narrative. Mm. And the focus is on the kids. Who are almost all dead. No, they're almost all alive except Rob. <sighs> Valid. Yeah. You're right. They are all alive except for yeah. Rob. Yeah. Speaking of the, his and Rob, kids. Rob was never a main character. He was never a point of view character. We only knew what was going on with Rob because other people told us what was going on with Rob. And we often saw Rob through the lens of the women in his life. That's right. We saw Rob through Catelyn. We saw Rob through Arya. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Sansa thinking about Rob. Some Jon Snow, too. So some brotherly stuff, but mostly women, like female protagonists, were telling us about Rob, which I think is kind of interesting. I think he did. A, I think George did a great job putting the whole thing together. God, I mean, I do it's too. just. I'm really excited about the the Lady Wolves of Winterfell. That's the She Wolves of Winterfell. The she Wolves. <laughs> yep. Oh, I'm so coming. excited. We're going to see old Nan. She's going to be alive. Maester Lewin might be alive. I don't know if he was still in the castle then. Oh, it's probably the. You know who the maester is going to be? The one that Lady Dustin, Barbary Dustin, the Lady of Barrowton, hates. Because she wanted to marry the older brother, uh, Brandon. Brandon Stark. Ned's Brandon, older brother. The builder? No. no, 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 not Brandon. Brendan? Brandon? Brendan? No, what was the older was, brother's name? It was Brandon. Brandon Stark. The yeah. one that was originally betrothed to Catelyn. Yeah, it was Brandon. But, yeah, he was in love with, with uh, Lady Dustin, Barbary Dustin. And she was in love with him, but the maester arranged, like, was whispering in the dad's ear and arranged for the Tully marriage uh, to align Winterfell with a southern lord. Southern and so, lord. yeah, so that we meet that maester. We're going to see a kid Ned, a kid Brandon, probably old Nan. Mm -hmm. Maybe, unless it goes even further back than that. I haven't actually done a lot of spoilery reading about what to expect with the She-Wolves of Winter, but I'm very excited. And I'm hoping it's Oh my good. god, it's going to be great. And Winterfell is going to be back in its glory. Oh, oh no more of this burned it, rubble That's bullshit. It. It's just like going to be... The hot springs flowing oh, through the man. walls, the Kingswood, heating up everything. the castle. The, yeah, that big scary weirwood in the center the, of the... God's wood there. It's just gonna, it's gonna be, be exciting. It's gonna be exciting. So dragons. George, you're yeah. George, you're amazing. Mm -hmm. So dragons. Yep. So we have this other thing. What do you think of the idea that to bring a dragon to life, or the way that Daenerys brought dragons to life, were was to the consumption of souls. Yeah, to fuse a soul with a dragon. So three souls, three dragons, three eggs. So, like we discussed a little bit earlier, we know one could be Cal Drogo. Yep, because he one. was definitely, that was the life. Could one. be his horse, too. Oh, that's true. S not Screamer, but whatever his horse's name was. Uh, and then Rago. Rago, the, the steed who mounts the world. Yeah, the unborn baby. That's right. But who's the third, really? I mean, it could be Cal Drogo's horse, but let's be honest, a horse is not the same yeah. as, as, a, as a human yeah. soul. Viserys, I mean, large. he was named get, uh, after Viserion was named after Viserys, her brother, who was a dragon and taught her everything that she knew about dragons. So maybe him. I don't know. But like, other, if, if a regular dragon was gonna hatch a clutch of eggs, it wouldn't need souls. True. Uh, we have Susie sitting on the keyboard keys of the computer now. She was trying to. Woo! She was trying to eat my USB cord because <laughs> that's what cats do. They think they're cute. Susie is on it, man. She's on point tonight. Yeah. Anyway, so. Yep. So I don't know. Out. So I don't know if it's a. What do you think of the whole soul equals dragon? Like you needed, or Daenerys needed souls. So there's definitely some blood magic going on. Yep. We know that. Yep. We know that 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 blood uh, magician woman, warg, whatever she yep. was, um, says, you know, don't come in this tent. There will be a price to pay. Yep. You know, you have to pay with life, you know, pays for death or whatever. Yep. Um, 
and we see that theme actually a lot throughout the book, um, life for death and death for life. However, was the baby's soul paid for to bring uh, Cal Drogo's zombie corpse back to life? Mm. Because yeah. that's kind of the, at least that's kind of what George kind of yeah. believes, leads us to believe. Yeah, that, that was the life that paid for Cal Drogo's life was her baby. Yeah, so, and I, mostly because, so the question is, the what I really want to know, what everyone really wants to know is, what the hell happened at Summer Hall? What happened when King Ares, uh, no, King Aegon, the egg... And Duncan the Tall, and every and the dragon's eggs, and their summer palace, which was called Summer Hall, went up in flames on the night that Rhaegar was born. What the fuck happened there? What happened, man? And is it more blood magic? Was he trying to do, like, a life for a life? Hatches a dragon's egg? He became obsessed. Aegon the, the Fifth, the Aegon the Unlikely... Became obsessed with dragons in his late life. So what the hell is going on here? These are not questions we're going to answer tonight. No. No. <sighs> However, there's a beautiful picture of Summer Hall going up in flames in the world book. It really is. And it says, from the history of Archmaester Gildane. Uh, George said that he originally... So this is only an excerpted, like a couple of small sentences. Yeah. But visually, he was going to have it be several pages of the book. And it'd look like it was all burnt away or ink had spilled all over everything. Mm. But then he was afraid people would try to return the books or say that they're like try to read through it or like whatever. And so instead they just added these little excerpted sentences. So the only stuff that you could read. Which says, <clears throat> from the history of Archmaester Gildane, the blood of the dragon gathered in one, seven eggs to honor seven gods, though the king's own septon had warned. Pyromancers, wildfire, flames grew out of control, towering, burned so hot that died but for the valor of the Lord Command. And that's all it says. So it's just like seven sentences that you can't really read. Mm -hmm. And we know that the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard was Sir Duncan the Tall, possibly a relative of Brian of Tarth, but we don't know. So Sir Duncan the Tall, I think, saves Rhaegar's life. Little baby Rhaegar, you can see that there's a woman giving birth in the bottom of that picture. Yes. And it says, would have died, but for the valor of the Lord Commander. And then I bet he charges back into the flames to try to save his king. But yeah, the last years of Aegon's reign were consumed by a search for ancient lore about the dragon breeding of Valeria. And it was said that Aegon commissioned journeys to places as far away as a shy by the shadow with the hopes of finding texts and knowledge that had not been preserved in Westeros. What became the dream of dragons was a grievous tragedy born in a moment of joy. In the fateful year 259, the king summoned many of those closest to him to Summerhall, his favorite castle, there to celebrate the impending birth of his first great-grandchild, a boy later named Rhaegar, to his grandson Ares and his granddaughter Rhaella, the children of Prince Jaehaerys. It is unfortunate that the tragedy that transpired at Summerhall left very few witnesses alive. How convenient. And those who survived would not speak of it. A tantalizing page of Gildane's history, surely one of the very last written before his own death, hints it much but the ink that was spilled over it in some mishap blotted out too much. And that's the sentences that I read. So do you think he was summoning people so that he could maybe sacrifice their life to bring dragons back to the world? I don't know. Something was going on with these dragons. He was convinced that he could enact these big reforms that helped out poor people and sort of took some of the power away from the richer people. Houses, yeah. yeah. Uh, if he had dragons, but it was taking him too long and he had to like, he was out of King's Landing all the time because it took him forever to get to Casterly Rock, to get to the north, to get to Dorne, to get to everywhere. And if he had dragons, he could do this stuff no problem. And so it became like his obsession. And it ends in this big, you know, obviously pyromancers, wildfires, seven eggs, the blood of the dragon gathered in one. 
I don't know. And then we know that Rhaegar was born that night, which has thematic similarities to what Daenerys did, but instead of a prince being born, dragons are born. In this other one, at Summer Hall, the dragons were not born, but a prince was. And from his line came, well, no, not Daenerys. I don't know, dude. So, dragons. They're everywhere. And they are, not only are, are they back, but they are, are there more of them? Yeah, I think. You think? Yeah. Where do you think? There's a rumor in the world book that there are eggs in Winterfell. Way deep down in the crypts. In the crypts. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, and then we've got a couple unaccounted for dragons after the dance with dragons. There's like sea smoke is one of the dragons that gets away uh, and is never seen again. Cannibal uh, is a dragon that lives on Dragonstone, an old one. And it's assumed that they died, but they may not have. And they may have had eggs or, you know, it's just that in the known universe, there are no dragons. Do dragons age? Do they get old and die? They do. They do? Yeah. yeah. They're not like mythical beings that live forever? They don't, but they live many hundreds of years. Mm. So with so like Valerian the Black Dread, he, only one person could ride him at a time, but over his lifetime he had five or six riders because he lived hundreds of years. One of them was King Aegon, the Conqueror, and the other one of them was Daemon. Uh, he married... Rainra and was sort of a he's kind of a bad guy good guy he's he started the gold cloaks okay um but yeah so he had Balerion the black dread so anyway so we've got this theory yeah Tyrion's a dragon mm -hmm. I love it I think I think you're a hundred percent right yeah I think that that just it makes too much sense with the dates everything and there. and the whole you know we see this theme throughout even all the books, that the seed is strong, mm -hmm. right? We see it with Baratheon. Mm -hmm. We see it with Lannister. Yep, that's we a big see... mystery of the first book. Right. And so why wouldn't we see it with a Targaryen? Mm -hmm. I mean, all these other all these other kids are yep. coming out stunted and weirded in growth with tails and yep. dying and stuff like that. And that's a perfect description of Tyrion. Yep. And yep. that's... That, that to me is an absolute one hundred percent fact. Yeah, I think. I I want to see Tyrion ride a dragon. I mean, it, maybe everybody wants to see that, but I think it's going to be the green dragon. All right. Because so, it can't be the black one, and I don't think it's going to be the white one. Who do you think the white one's going to then? Aegon. Aegon. Yeah, I think Aegon gets him. Because Jon Snow is just too. He's got he's got too much road to cross. Before dragons even come into his worldview. I think not only that, but he's also so far removed from the whole... Well, because he's dead and he's never going to be alive again. Right, of course. So, he's dead and yeah. there's no more Jon Snow. Yeah, Jon Snow R plus L dead. equals J, but J yeah. is dead. J is dead. J is dead. Yeah, long live so, J. Long so, live the I J. mean, the redemption, it's going to be Jon Snow dies, Jon Stark is born. Or do you think it's going to be John Targaryen? But it's not going to be Targaryen because he was raised as a Stark. He's the last living son of Ned Stark that we know of, that most people know of. I mean, I know we have Bran and Rickon, but... Well, what the fuck is Rickon doing? That's I mean, that fucking Rickon over in Skagos. He's What's fucking, he doing up there? No one gives a fuck. He's, he's five. He's cannibalizing. He's learning yeah. the cannibal ways. I think that's just rumor. But I do hope we get to see a unicorn. Yeah. How would a unicorn play in the world with dragons? Well, they're rumored in the world book again. Skagos is rumored to have unicorns. And there's, you know, they've never seen a living species, but they've seen some uh, skulls that have like narwhal kind of horns on them. Narwhals, and it's kind of. Narwhals it's more like a. Ocean. It's more like a goat than a horse. And so if you're living on a rocky island, it would make sense to have a goat. A goat with the giant horns. Yeah. Right? It's not too far of a stretch. If you're going to have zorses and manticores and other fantastical beasts. Like dragons. Yeah, like dragons. <laughs> like dragons. <laughs> oh, man. Yep. It's, uh, you know, it's it's a big world out there. In but, Westeros. So, so let's ask this question, right? Let's say the dragons are riding back to Westeros. Yep. Why wouldn't they conquer the whole world? Why right. Why would they leave 
Well, we know Essos and we know it's building up to when the others break down the wall. Right. And we but know are that the others coming. not plaguing Essos? Do they ever not plague Essos? Like this is not the first time this has yeah. happened. What what happened in the free cities? Yeah. The the first men came to Westeros and there was a land bridge. Dorne is kind of shaped like a foot. Right. And there was a land bridge that connected it to like the southern area of Essos. But now it's just the stepstones. It's just a bunch of islands. So now, at that point, you have this 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 world where these others exist, which mm-hmm. is the big the big story, yep. right? The big conflict. But how does that plague the rest of the world? It seems to be just a Westeros problem. Yeah, yeah. But it's still. I mean, that's where our hearts are. That's where the story is, Dave. Well, yeah, but. Now you're telling me that Danny is our story and she's never been to I Westeros. Know. I don't know if Danny's our story, but she she's been one of the more heroic characters oh, throughout. Absolutely. We see her become super baller and Aegon with teats, as they call her, and she has Balerion the Black Dread born again in, in Drogon. So she's poised to take over Westeros and reunite it at just the right time for everybody to fight the others when the others break through that 700 foot tall and then the world the the books end and Danny is the queen regent or she's the queen and (laughs) everyone lives happily ever after Dario Naharis is the king yeah is that what happens (laughs) in your in your in your version no No fucking way way. no I hate to say it that's the thing you can't predict what he's gonna do because he's just gonna throw wrenches I think I think Danny's a goner you do I do (sighs) I think Danny's a goner I think Tyrion is taken over. Oh, you don't think Tyrion would die? You know, I don't. Because I think you're right. I think Tyrion has been the hero this whole time. But Daenerys is also the hero. There's not just one. Jon Snow is also the hero. (laughs) I mean, there's so many options, but... And Sandor is still alive. We're going to see him come back in Winds of Winter, one would hope. And it's called Winds of Winter. Winter is creeping south. That means the others can survive further. in further into the area. We there's a lot of balls in play here. So dragons aren't even on the radar for the north. Hell no, dragons aren't on the radar really for, for anyone Westeros. in Westeros. Yeah. The yeah. Only, they just heard rumors that yep. they exist. Yep. People in Et- Esos are like, holy shit, yep. they're fucking dragons yep. here. They're traveling to they're Marine like, to oh, see yeah, them. Oh yeah, we and... hate dragons, let's kill them. Yeah. Now everyone in Marine is like, kill the dragons, because they remember that the dragons scorched their land and broke down all their castles and enslaved their people. And, you know, they couldn't, they went to, in the history book again, Went to war, and the reason that it's a desert, a scorched desert wasteland, is because the dragons burned everything when Giscari, the Giscari, declared war against Valeria hundreds of years ago. And so the dragon riders were like, bring it, dude. And so, yeah, you have 20 times our number, but we have fire-breathing dragons. <laughs> we're going to burn everything. And Ooh. they did. And so. And so that's why Esos is a. Vast Dothraki Sea wasteland. Yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. why they had to go with the slave trade because they didn't have any crops left. They didn't have any old uh, olive trees or great fields of wheat. They have men with grayscale. They have men with grayscale. They have slave pits they and have dusty old bricks. Yeah, yeah, they have the like old... this is a brutal world that the dragon masters left for them, and yeah, their own hubris led to their downfall. But still, of course they hate dragons. Of course they'd want to kill them. The only reason that the good masters tried to buy them in the first place... Was to kill them. What, no, was because of their greed. Because uh, it was the well, only power, one of its right. kind. It was little. And they and once they saw what's-his-name gets his eyeballs melted, they, uh, they were like, oh yeah, we hate dragons. Oh, oh yeah, this is a bad <laughs> idea. Dragons oh. are terrible. So carrots. <laughs> Oh, shit. All men must drink. <laughs> All men must drink. Yep. Which dragon would you ride? Oh, fuck. I'd, I'd, I'd ride Drogon. Yeah? I'm a badass like that. Me and yeah. Drogon would get shit done. I like um, the older dragons from Dance with Dragons. There's like a whole list of them. I like the name Caraxes. Okay. Um, let me see. Do, do, do. 
We're on Mistresses. The cool thing about the oh. World Book is it has all these pictures of the good swords, like Blackfire. It's called the Blackfire Rebellion because Aegon the Unworthy, who just fucked everyone and had a million kids, yeah. gave like one of his heroic bastard children a sword yeah valerian steel sword a valerian steel targaryen family sword called blackfire and he took the name blackfire as his own instead of whatever his bastard name was let's see the dragons in the dance who is caraxes i'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to read that so i can pick an appropriate dragon yeah. with well, the personality so here's some names sheep stealer okay <laughs> gray ghost the cannibal, which is a wild dragon and a scavenger, it kills hatchlings, it was never tamed, and it just vanished at the end of the war. No one knows what happened to it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Caraxes was Prince Damon's uh, dragon. It was called the Blood Worm. Huge and formidable, killed in battle with Vagar above the god's eye. Ooh. Spoilers. 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 Let's see. Uh, Moon Dancer Morning. Wait, did he not? Maybe he didn't. Uh, maybe it's uh, Vagar that I'm thinking of. Yeah, so it wasn't Valerian the Black Dread. It was Vagar. I've been saying Valerian the Black Dread all... We have to start this podcast over. Oh, no. No. Vagar, the last of Aegon the Conqueror's three dragons. Old, but huge and powerful. Killed in battle... Sorry, there's spoilers. I won't spoil them for you. Spoil them, please. Killed in battle with another dragon above the god's eye. Oh. Yep. I wonder if that was uh, the other dragon that you read who... Caraxes. Caraxes was mm -hmm. killed over the god's eye. Yep. There's one called Silverwing. One okay. called Sunfire. That was King Aegon's dragon. Splendid... Oh! King Aegon, this is why I think the white dragon goes to Aegon, the new Aegon. Listen, splendid but young, crippled for much of the war after Rook's rest, then slain in battle with the dragon Moondancer, Dragonstone, but it was white with gold. And so it was like, it shimmered like sunfire, mm. right? And which is where it gets its name. So the, the dragons were fighting their ch each other. Because this they were on either side in the Dance of Dragons. This is, a, this is the black yep. versus green. Yep. Okay. King Aegon, who his mom wanted him to be the king, but he was younger. And then Princess Rhaella, mm. Rhaenyra, rather. Princess Rhaenyra became Queen Rhaenyra. And so there was like, she had a bunch of kids, and all her kids had dragons, and... And they all fight each other, and then there was these old dragons. So there were tons of fucking dragons tons in the world. Tons of fucking dragons, until they all fought each other, and couldn't get out of their own asses, and killed everybody. Killed each other. Yep. Stormcloud, that was the name of one. What would you name yours? <sighs> That's a great question. Yeah. Hashtag dragon names. Yeah. I think just because... Uh, Thunderclap. Thunderclap? Is that what you would call your, your dragon? No, I'm just spitballing here. Spitballing? Spitballer. So I think uh, I think lightning has always been something nice. to me. So I, what I, color would it be? I think it would be white with like black, black eyes and nice. like black accent wings nice. and stuff like that. Kind of like a stormtrooper, you know? Just I love swooping it. In, oh my god, that's called great. Called lightning. Just yeah. <laughs> He wouldn't spit fire, though. He'd spit, like, electricity and oh. shit, you know? Well, now you're getting a little... What is that cartoon movie? Uh, How to Train a Dragon. How to Train a Dragon. Yeah, yeah you're yeah, getting yeah, a little yeah. hard to train I'm thinking of Toothless, but, yeah. like, reverse a little yeah. bit almost, yeah. Toothless is so great. Yeah, he's the best. Yeah. yeah Actually, I, I, have a, I have a great t-shirt um, that has three dragon eggs on it. It's got yeah. Drogon, uh, Rhaegar, um, and yeah. Viserys, or... Face yeah. or whatever they name yeah, yeah, yeah. The white, the black, green, Victorian. and white. Uh, no, 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 no. This, ah, uh, fuck. Vicery. Anyway, not the point. <laughs> we may have been drinking a little. We, not, all men must drink. All men must drink. Not the point. But anyway, they're done in the style of How to Train Your Dragon. Yep. So it's, it's oh, like nice. a crossover. It's like Toothless is Drogon. Awesome. And there's two other little dragons in that kind of same cartoon My, style. Uh, what would your dragon's name be? Well, first of all, my mashup t-shirt that I want. My brother sent me a, t a picture of this the other day. And it, I think it's a Barstool Sports one. 
but it's in all red letters and in the Game of Thrones font, and it says the North remembers. Mm. But it's got a Patriots football, like the flying Elvis insignia uh, over the top. Oh, screw for, the Patriots! Yeah, for the whole Tom Brady thing, <laughs> and I was like, the North remembers. <laughs> the North totally remembers. And I was like, that is a Patriots T-shirt I could get behind. Nice. So. That's the one that I want. But what was the question? What would your dragon's name be? Oh, I don't know. And what color would it be? My dog's name is Bailey, so maybe it would be Bailey the Brown Dread. <laughs> but that would just be if my dog was a dragon. This, <laughs> you wouldn't be uh, Meat Master? <laughs> no, it definitely wouldn't be Meat Master. Uh, I like the names that are evocative, like... It, mine would never be named these, but I liked the name Silverwing, Sea Smoke, mm. uh, Moon Dancer. I like it when they're like that. But then I also think it's pretty baller to have Maraxes and Caraxes and Anixia. Yeah, like those. That's a Warcraft Vagar. reference of a dragon. I just saw, or I just showed Kirsten the Leroy Jenkins. Uh, Thing for the very first time because it came up we were playing a card game like uh, Cards Against Humanity but uh -huh. on our phones and it was Leroy Jenkins and I played that and no one knew the reference or maybe I know it or maybe I know one it. other girl knew the reference and I was like Kirsten how do you not know this <laughs> so I had to play her the video and she just she just kept playing it for me nonstop for the next week. It was pretty great. <laughs> Leroy Jenkins. Uh, guys, we have about a thirty-three uh, percent percentage of uh, clearing this room. Point three percent repeating, of course. <laughs> They're so nerdy. Oh, it's fantastic. You know, it was staged, right? Was it? Yeah, unfortunately, uh -huh. that was staged. But uh, but yeah, it was a f that was. You broke a good my heart a little bit. I'm you sorry. I was a, I was around. Like, I was playing World of Warcraft back then, so yeah. I kind of was in that scene a little bit, yeah. so I know exactly what was going on. But yeah, there's. there's Leroy some... Jenkins! What? Here we go, guys! <laughs> Leroy Jenkins! Oh, God, look at the spike on that one. Jesus. <laughs> Woo! My sound levels are up there. <laughs> sorry, people at home. Sorry, it's not too sorry. Much, too much of that black dragon juice. Oh, man, too much of it. Yep. Mm. I think we covered all our points yep. for our dragons. Yep. I think I want to leave our uh, listeners... One final question. Do dragon eggs ever die? That's a great question. We because were we they stone? What made them come back to life? Was it Daenerys? Was it that they had a dream connection? Or were they always alive and dormant? What the hell, man? What's up with these dragon eggs? I don't know. I think that's a question everyone's been asking for... I want a book on dragon biology. Yeah? Yeah. Well, okay. George, write us George, a book on dragon biology, please. We want to know everything there is to know about dragons. <laughs> I know. He's like, world. no shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, so do I. I'm still figuring it out. I haven't added that red string in my room yeah. with newspaper clippings around yet. He doesn't have that. Remember, you told me he uh, writes on just an old computer. Yeah, I know. I saw computer. it. I did see that in an article once, that, which is crazy. Word, an old word processor because it's fast for him. Oh, fucking yeah. George. Anyway, I want to leave the view our listeners with a our viewers, our viewers, our listeners to all you fine folks playing at home. Yes, with a question, and you know I'm curious. Oh, okay, yeah. What would you name your dragon? Yeah. And what colors would it be? Oh, I love it. I think, I think I want to hear. I love it. I'm never gonna hear. No, I one really liked to a podcast, but I really liked your stormtrooper thing. I I don't know. It's I have a thing with I like white. That. I don't know. I have a thing with white. My car yeah. is white. Yeah. And, what, what, you know, aside from white and black, yeah. white with black accents, what what other accent would it have? It's got to have a glimmer of something. I think orange. A glimmer of orange. Of like, yeah, like like that orange right there, like almost like oh yeah, like a like a fiery orange. Yeah. But it yeah. would just be really subtle, like yeah. maybe like in the eyes, in like the eyes, trimming along yeah. the, the the wing or something yeah, like yeah. that. But yeah, mostly, I think he'd okay. be. I think he'd be white, f mostly. I think he would have like a really dark, like maybe s like sh couple stripes on his yeah. head or something, like yeah. really black, deep strikes. Yeah. And then just like a glimmer of orange. A blue yes. dragon. I would have a blue dragon. Yeah. Yeah, I would want a watery colored dragon. Yep. Can dragons go in water? I think that. Can they swim? So in the world of Westeros, probably not, because yeah. they are fire made. You know, flesh. 
But I would like one that is sort of a smoky gray and blue. Okay. And maybe some like sea foamy green. All right, all right. Green eyes maybe, but very like sort of water camouflage dragon. That's the one that I want. So maybe he could fly in the sky or like Good right in, above yeah. the sea or something Good and not in get salt noticed. salt air and right on the coasts. Because if I had a dragon, I would just fly up and down the coasts, right on the water. I don't need to go over the land. What would you do though? I would, I would like, what pick would off, you do, man? Well, pick off fill, uh, fishing villages yeah. and kill people and eat no. their eat their shit? No way, man. I'm no. just like, I don't know. Well, I'm not a conqueror. But what would you do on a dragon then? You're just riding I, around? No, I would work on designing the saddles for dragons. Because I would be really good at that. Yeah, but... but I and mean, I'd have to like test them out. So okay, maybe my okay. dragon would like skim across the top drag- of the ocean and get it wet. What happens to the leather if it gets wet? All right, all right. you'd about- be a dragon saddle engineer. Yeah, I would be a drag a traveling dragon saddle engineer. Mm. Yeah, and but, so. But okay, so let's say you yep. have a dragon. Yep. Not everyone's gonna have a dragon. That's gonna be right. such a niche market. That's okay. I'm know? good at niche markets. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of speaking niche- of which, if you're listening to this and in you've real made it time, this far, and you've made it this far. Go check out my Kickstarter uh, on Kickstarter yeah. and support me uh, because I'm really good in niche markets. I'm Tell writing, them what it is. I'm writing a graphic novel. It's already written. I'm drawing a graphic novel. And I need funding so that I can get it printed. And it's called Duck, Third Time is the Charm. And it is about an entourage of young lesbians that descend on P-Town for one party weekend. And even if lesbian stories aren't really your thing... You can always just donate whoa. to artists whoa, 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 that whoa, are whoa, trying whoa. to make their dreams come true. Wait a second. Yeah. Lesbian stories are the best. Right, but it's it's not a pandering lesbian story. It's not like a male gazy lesbian story. It's an authentic telling of awesome partying lesbians, which it should still be everyone's thing. That but, sounds awesome. Yeah. But in case, you know, that's not your cup of tea, then you should at least go check out my Kickstarter page and, you know, throw me a buck. And if you give her enough money, yeah. you could be in the comic yourself. That's true. That is very true. I did read all yep. of your awards uh, there. I'm adding a new tier because oh. I talked to my digital book publisher who has Duck 1 and 2. And I'm going to do a bundle package of all downloads for Duck 3. And then you can immediately download Duck 1 and 2 oh. uh, if I get successfully funded. And I'm just going to, for everybody that has donated in the first three days, because this is only the third day it's been open, um, I'm going to send them all the link regardless of whatever they donated. A dollar or, you know, $200 doesn't matter. You're going to get the downloads for all my books. Look at you. You are... Yeah. Really giving back to yeah. the community. I'm this doing is, some stuff, man. Yeah. I love comics. I want people to read comics. I want to be able to make more comics. I want to make this story. It seems yeah. like a really good time to be doing this story. I meant to bring you over a copy of Silk, but I didn't. That's all right. I forgot it. I will. But it's in a comic book store right now. You could go buy one. There's a comic book store down the road. Yeah, you're going to go get it. I Silk number seven. You'll be able to Silk see my seven. awesome name, Tana Ford, right dun, on dun, it. Dun, dun. It's really kind of ball. Can I have you sign it? Yes, absolutely. I'll draw awesome. on it. I'll draw like. I actually, you know, it's funny because I actually have um, a collection of comic books that my mom sent me yeah. that I had when I was younger. Awesome. Um, they're actually sitting right there in my closet. And in fact, yeah. uh, we're going to have our behind Yay. the scenes conversation and maybe I'll show them to you. Okay, that sounds so, great. Bye, guys. Thank you all for listening and I hope you all... Westeros whenever leave. Enjoy your drinks because all men... All men must drink. Must drink.